that's more like it. Oh, fingertips coming back to life. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's cold outside. Mmm, <sighs> I mean, it's called a nuclear winter for a reason, but you just, you don't quite appreciate how cold that can be with the sun completely blocked out by the atomic dust cloud. It's just, oh, oh, it got right into my bones as well. And I was only out for five minutes. Mm. And these cybernetics, I mean, I've ripped out as much as I can, but there's only so much that pliers can do. And I'm on Brenda's waiting list, but there's so many people ahead of me. I mean, I was best mates with the queen of the wasteland, as was. And now I can't even get my cybernetic parts ripped out. It's just ridiculous. And it doesn't half itch, I'll tell you that. It really itches. I mean, that makes sense because I've got wires going into my nervous system. And well, of course that's gonna itch a little bit, but it just is a little more than I can cope with right now, with there being six feet of snow outside. And we've got icicles in the vault, in the vault itself, there's icicles. And the generator's completely out of order, that is gone. I've built myself a nice little fire. I'm really glad for that. It's uh, charred triffid tentacles, that's what I'm, that's why I'm burning. There's quite a proliferation of them outside, so that's good. And the atomic bomb did do for the Triffids. You can see the leaves are completely gone. Even the lovely flower head that, uh, that Penny gave me all those weeks ago now has wilted and finally died. It's not trying to sting me every time I walk past it now. So it did the job, but that dust cloud and we live in a dust bowl world anyway, so it really kicked up the dust. I mean, talk about dust bunnies under the sideboard. This, this was something exceptional. The sky went as black as night, as black as black could be. And then it got cold with no sun shining because no sun could make it through, I'll tell you that. The nights got colder and colder, and then the days got colder and colder. And then it just began snowing. So much snow, all of the moisture in the air froze. And because there was no moisture in the air, your throat got really dry. It's a very odd mixture of sensations to be so cold and yet so dry. And the thing they don't tell you is that when the sun does finally start to make it through, the ice and the snow are so entrenched in the ground, a, a, a permanent frost, a permafrost, if you will, that it doesn't melt. It doesn't melt at all. And that sunlight then reflects off the snow and you get sunburned in an ice age. And you just, can't get warm to save your life. I mean, I'm right by the fire. I can barely feel it. I'm gonna have to go and get more wood. Oh, there's bound to be more bits of Triffid out there somewhere. And not only can I burn them, but I can also eat them as well. A nice bit of Triffid jerky goes down well. Triffid's about all we can find now. The bomb completely wiped out most of the animals on the planet. And those that didn't die in the blast, well, they're slowly dropping off because of the nuclear winter. Fire's getting low. Better get some more wood. Okay, Mr. Choppy, you're coming with me. We've got a mission. ever going to get used to how cold it is outside now. <sighs> I 
What's all this? Looks like someone's been living here. Yeah. Yeah, look, someone's made a flyer. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. smell smoke around here so I thought I'd come and investigate and yeah looks like someone's been making a little a little place to live around here that fire is the fire is wonderful it's a shame they haven't managed to get rid of all the icicles I wonder what was going on around here we've all moved to the other end of the vault we've not had any reason to be around here not since the generator went out that sign that's new. That wasn't there when we left. Someone's put that there. Who could be living around here? All the triffid leaves are all wilted. Oh, and the flower! Mr. Flappy! Oh, I haven't seen you in ages, buddy. How are you doing? How oh, is the cold getting to you? Feel it in your bones, yeah. I know that feeling. living here. Whoever it is, they have knowledge of the generator and they're industrious enough to make a fire out of who knows what. I wonder what they've made out of. Well, I've been living here. I, I was trying to fix the generator, but it's just impossible. It's completely gone. Oh, I'm so sorry. You should have come with us. We've all moved down to the other end of the vault. We found a whole warehouse all full of supplies. Where I got this little, little natty number. Oh, that's where the jacket came from. I've got to say, I'm a little bit envious of the jacket. It is cold out there. I've just been out to look for some more triffid to put on the fire, but I've used up all the small logs nearby. I need to really go to with the hatchet. That's what you've been using for the fire, bits of triffid. Yeah, and it makes a great jerky as well, so you can eat it because, you know, there's no animals since you blew them all up with your nuclear bomb. Oh, do you forgive me for setting off the nuclear bomb? Of course I do. Thank you. I mean, so you set off a nuclear bomb too close to the vault, blew out the generator that was our only source of electricity, naffed up all of the cybernetics that we'd all recently had installed, but you did destroy the triffids, so... Yeah, in retrospect that might not have been the best idea. I mean, we did get rid of the triffids, but we might have also destroyed the world again. A little bit. But, but, since it's blowing a gale outside, all that snow and stuff, it's you and me just like the old days and we're completely stuck at home! So I'll tell you what, to make up for the nuclear bomb that you set off, why don't you spin me a yarn, the likes of which you've never spun before? I could, I could. What if I weave you a tapestry the likes of which you've never seen before? Okay, okay, but it's a little bit chilly and I like to get moving when I'm cold. So how about you lead me on a merry dance the likes of which we've never danced before? I think that's a fantastic idea, Rob. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay, let's go. Today's story comes from before the before time before the world was covered in ice and snow, before this nuclear winter that we find ourselves in. This story comes from before the Triffids attacked. This story comes from before even when the world was a dust bowl. This story comes from a time when you could see the sun whenever you wanted, before the ash cloud blocked it out. This story comes from a place where the sun shone every day. It comes from a place that was covered in sand 
and with the sun shining as it did, it made that sand glow golden. This story comes from this happy place. This story is about a blacksmith. The blacksmith lived in a city in this happy place. Now this city was known for its learned people, its vast libraries and its wise emperor. The smith was good at what he did. He would hammer every day at his forge, making metal objects that he would then sell for coin. And with that coin, he could buy all the food he wanted. He never went to bed hungry. He could buy a nice house so that he could always be sheltered. He could go to the tea house whenever he wanted. He did not need anything. But this blacksmith was getting greedy. This blacksmith wanted more than he was due. And in this city where mysticism still existed, he heard tell of a djinn. A djinn is a creature that lives in the ether. It may be summoned by a man and then it would grant wishes in exchange for favors of their own. But the blacksmith just wanted one wish and he wanted that wish granted no matter what. And so the blacksmith decided that he would summon himself a djinn and set about doing just that. With my hammer strikes I summon the djinn. I bind the djinn to the fires of my forge. With every strike the binding grows tighter. I summon the djinn with all my might. With my cold and iron heart I summon the djinn. Come forth djinn, come forth. I swear to you and I promise you this. If you grant me my wish, I will set you free and I will hold you no longer. Only one wish I desire from you, one wish only. I wish for the ability to bind metals together as I have bound you to my fires. In this way I will make great wealth and with this wealth I will be comfortable for the rest of my days. I swear to you that once I have made enough to be comfortable, I will set you free. No more wishes as other men would. You can go about your business as jinns do, and I will go about mine as a powerless blacksmith in the way that I do presently. This I ask of you, jinn, and this you must give to me. For I bind you now to the fires of my forge by the strength of my iron heart and the strength of my arm. My hammer blows on this anvil have made it so, and thus it will be done. And so the smith bound the djinn to his forge fire. After that he had the ability to combine any two metals together at will. He created all manner of beautiful things. Things that no one in the city had ever seen before. The finest of jewelries, such fine filigree spun out of beautiful metals. Huge, beautiful statues that could adorn the square. Even the emperor was interested. He sent envoys to investigate how the smith had done this. Maybe his own smithies could replicate the process. But the smith did not reveal his secrets. And so the emperor commissioned him to make jewelry for his wife. Such an honor for the smith. The smith grew wealthy, wealthier than he ever could have imagined he would ever be. Eventually the day came when the smith could have retired on all of his wealth amassed. He could have lived happily for the rest of his days and never picked up a hammer again. On this day, the djinn expected that she would be freed, stuck as she was inside the forge fire, bound there by the smith's will. But the smith did not come. The smith did not free her. And so the next day, the djinn thought, today will be the day that the smith frees me. But still, the smith did not do this. Day after day passed, the djinn got tireder and tireder, 
she got more and more exasperated. She got angry. And then the djinn confronted the smith. Blacksmith, I have fulfilled my end of the bargain. You have more wealth than you could ever use. Now it is time to fulfill your end of the deal. Free me now. You're right, Jim. I should free you and set you loose into the world, away from the flames of my forge to which I originally bound you. And I will set you free from the flames of my forge, but I will take you and using the power that you have given me, I will bind you to my anvil to forever be my servant, to keep this power within myself and grow ever wealthier and wealthier. I bind you now. No, I did not give you that ability. I gifted you only the act of combining metals. I am spirit but i sense a metal within you blacksmith i sense a metal within your heart you will bind that instead <gasps> the djinn had found steel in the heart of the smith a coldness and a hardness from where his greed came, from where his cruelty grew out of. And so when the smith thought that he was going to bind the djinn to his anvil once and for all, capture her forevermore, forever make that wealth that he so desired, she switched places, and instead he bound his own heart to it. The djinn left free, finally, but the blacksmith, Oh, the blacksmith was cursed to remain at his forge forevermore. His heart was bound to his anvil, which meant it could no longer beat on its own. It was the blacksmith's job now to forever hammer away, and with every hammer strike, his heart would beat, pumping blood around his body once. With every strike, he might live just that little bit longer. So forevermore, the smith was cursed to hammer away, to work unceasingly. If he should stop, so would his heart, and then he would die, surely. Because of the smith's greed, because he had wanted more than he was due, he had brought about this curse upon himself. This was entirely of his own doing. And so, remember, if you are fortunate enough to meet a djinn, if you are lucky enough that they will grant you wishes, do not renege on your debt. Do not break your promise. You do not know what kind of creative punishment a djinn might have in store for you should you break your word. Oh, that blacksmith, eh? What a tyke! Oh, how greedy! He was probably earning plenty as it was working away, and then he wanted even more wealth, he got exactly what he wanted, and he still wasn't happy! Yeah, that poor uh, purple lady. Gin! Gin, yeah, that poor gin. She was stuck, and he was meant to free her after he became wealthy, and he totally reneged on the deal. I mean... That's so dishonest. That's just so dishonest. Absolutely awful of him. But he got his just desserts. Exactly, and now he's stuck to his anvil forever. Well, not physically stuck to his anvil, because, I mean... Super glue might be involved then, but, but certainly his heart was welded to the metal of the anvil. So I guess in that respect, he was stuck to the anvil and, and hammering day and night. Do you think he's still going out there somewhere, just hammering away? Hammering away? He'd have one really massive muscular arm, wouldn't he? Unless he learned how to do it with both hands. Oh, ambidextrous, yeah, quite possibly, ambidextrous. So 
useful skill to have. Yeah, it was a really good story though, and it had a proper lesson to it as well, didn't it? I know, I really like that about the story. Yeah, really yeah. Oh, I like that it was set in a place where you could see the sun whenever you wanted. Oh, the sun, the sun. Talking about the sun being blocked out. Yeah. You remember when you uh, you set the nuclear bomb off? Yeah. And the, the ensuing dust cloud blocked out the sun and we got the nuclear winter. Yeah. 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 And you remember when all of the, the wildlife, all of the animals got wiped off the face of the planet completely? Yeah. 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 Over the past week. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking that we could make up for that a little bit. Really? Well, yeah. Because, um, you know, the vault has a cloning facility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a well-known fact that we've got a cloning facility. I mean, all vaults have one, surely. I thought that we could clone some new animals. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Oh, except we don't have any DNA to clone. That's that's kind of a vital building well, block. Well, I went out with my trusty shovel. Trusty shovel? Trusty shovel seen that for a while. I went out with my trusty shovel and I dug into the ground and I kept digging and digging and digging and I got down really 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 far because uh, all of the top bones had been completely obliterated by the nuclear blast. Yeah that makes sense. And I dug down and down and down until I got to the rock and then I started digging into that as well. Wow okay. And um well you just wait there and I'll show you what I've got. I wonder what he's found. I mean, if he's dug too far down, then surely nothing will have got. So, um, yeah, I found a bone. Wow. It's a bit bigger than I expected, um, especially considering it's a toe bone. Um, and it was encased in rock, but I reckon it might have, uh, it might have some DNA in oh, it. Oh, wow, what a find! I wonder what creature it's from. I don't know, it has to be something really, really big and probably quite old considering the depth at which I found the bone. Yeah, it does look like there's some calcification that's gone on on the bone. Mm. Maybe even some uh, paratization, some petrification even. Yeah. Do you think you'll get any DNA out of it? Well, it does look like it's a quite an old specimen, but with any luck, if we drill right into the centre, we should be able to find some genetic material we can use. But if it's fragmented, though, that'll be a problem, surely. Uh, that is a risk, considering how old it has to be. Oh, but I just had an idea. Do you remember, oh, many moons ago now, when I came back with the seeds? Oh, yes, yes. And with the seeds, you yes. had a breather. And in your breather, there was a froggy. There was a froggy. Now, we've been managing to keep a colony of froggies going. They live by the uh, moisture evaporators where we pick mushrooms. Oh, pick the mushrooms, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's lovely and humid for them there. And they've grown into a lovely little family there. It's really sweet, really. But I think, look, we can use their DNA to fill in any gaps in the gene sequencing. That's fantastic news. So we can clone some new animals of whatever kind this is and repopulate this this Ice Age world with animals. And that would be amazing. That would be fantastic. I'll be able to undo all the mistakes that came about because of the nuclear bomb. Oh, thank you, Rob, so much. Oh, I'm so excited. I have to get going right away. Okay, yeah, yeah. What great news. I mean, who knows what ancient old animal that bone could be from, but we'll have them back soon enough. Mm. How's your snow coat? Mm, it's good, I like it. It's cold, but it's it's not like bad outside cold. Mm. It's good, fun, inside cold, you know? Ah. Mm. Mm. Did you get any syrup? No, mine's just plain. Mm. What about you? Uh, no, mine's just plain as well. 
Maybe we could make some syrup out of, uh... Oh, wobbly bit. We can't, because there is no wobbly bit, is there? Because we got the wobbly bit from the mutants. Uh, and there are no mutants, because we vaporised them all with an atomic bomb. Said I was sorry. Uh, Triffid, what about Triffid? But was that purple juice? Yeah! It did make my tongue go a bit numb and tingly, but that might be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could work. Hi. Hi. We just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who's donated so far. We have the best time making the show, don't we, Rob? Mm. Oh yeah, the best time. Because of your generous donations, we've managed to make a dozen episodes. That's right, we're on episode 12. 12? Wow. We've been going for three months. How about that? But we can't keep making this show without the help of your good selves at home. So if you have anything at all that could help us out, gloves, even if they don't match, in fact, I think that would be preferable if they don't match. Yeah. Woolly hat. Yeah, I think uh, Fred needs one for his jar, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, Fred, you remember Fred with the uh, skulls. Skulls. But what we mostly need is uh, thick woolly socks. Mm. So if you have anything lying around spare, anything that you can donate, please go to www.paypal.me slash strange and give what you can. All payments are secure and everything goes directly to making all of this happen. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. We can't use triffid juice. Because you blew all them up as well, didn't you? Oh, is there anything left after all of that? Snow! That's why we're eating snow cones! Ah! I like it. All them off me.